guest today is Cheryl Solomon from Row House Yarn and Row House is new to me so I'm really glad that you reached out we're new to a lot of people and so yeah. tell us all about yourself and Row House so um, Row House is an online only so we're an online only yarn store slash digital learning component mm -hmm. and so maybe I'll give you a little bit about me first yeah let's talk Go about you quickly first. through me um, so I am a lawyer by training. I um, was a lawyer, practicing lawyer until like late 2015. I still have a client on the side. What one, um, one client? Yeah, just Isn't a that tiny nice? little bit of time. Isn't just that tiny nice to have one bit. client? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I just feel like lawyers are always totally overwhelmed with like all the things. And I just love that you had client with one yeah. T. That's like kind of great. Well, the two jobs before that. So I started out being a commercial litigator in a big firm, mm -hmm. at two different big firms. Then I got offered, and, and it was during the second stint of that where I was living in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And it's where I started first thinking about opening a you know a knitting store yarn shop idea. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of early 2000s. I shouldn't give dates or I'll just date myself a little <laughs> bit too much. It's all about the eye cream, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, a good one. it's time to amp up the yeah. eye cream. I know. Um, I, I had to have an intervention with my sister. I was like, I love you. It's time for eye cream. Yeah. <laughs> and since I'm the older sister, I'm allowed to do that. Yeah. Like, this happened to me a few years ago. Yeah. It's like, it's time for eye cream. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, do I need to go up to the retina version? Like, I'm, I've been in oh, eye cream I'm for, like, full, decades. I'm full retin. Retin yeah. is in the story. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, and, you know, as so I was living in Manhattan, you know, kind of being a knitter here. I've been a knitter since I was, I learned to knit from when I was my, I learned to knit from my grandmother when I was, like, seven or eight. Oh. Put it down. Yeah. Didn't touch it again until college. Mm -hmm. Then I spent the summer overseas in Germany, one summer in college, and a woman was knitting, and I was like, that looks really cool. And so I picked it back up. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've been knitting. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle. Um, yeah. Well, and it's also been, for me, being a lawyer, you know, you're in a high stress situation, and it was kind of one of those things that helped. Like, I mean, you know, I always exercise and things like that too, but, but knitting also helped bring it down mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. kind of I would find that if I and I still find it if I don't knit for a few days I can feel my tension kind right. of like you know yeah Isn't that funny okay yeah. I get it I feel that so um so I was living in New York working for a big firm and started thinking about the business I the knitting business idea but kind of wasn't brave enough to pull the trigger mm -hmm. then um I got offered kind of a job that you don't say no to, um, and moved overseas, so I moved to London, um, where I was the general counsel of a luxury goods group, and I did that for six and a half years. Mm -hmm. Then I was ready to come home, so it's time to move back. So I moved back in mid-2011. I kind of pulled out the knitting business idea, started looking at it again, still wasn't quite ready to kind of pull the trigger. Um, and then I got offered another amazing job. So I moved to LA to join Tom's Shoes, who people probably know as kind of the one-for-one -one company, mm -hmm. as their kind of first chief legal officer. Oh. So I was in LA doing that for three years. They had a, a bank capital came in, they had a VC, a, a private equity firm came in and, and bought a controlling stake and then, you know, and then as the main one capital does, people have to kind of take over, right? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, our, the founder is still involved, mm -hmm. but Bain Capital, you know, was controlling it. Mm -hmm. So they obviously, you know, they, as one does, the management team changes and, mm -hmm. and you move out. So um, that was late 2015. And that's when, I, you know, I pull, at first, my family was like, are you finally going to do the name business? And I was like, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. And then things just kept pushing me that way. Yeah. And I think at times I learned so much about digital mm -hmm. and I learned how you could do things as kind of an e-commerce business, mm -hmm. as a digital business, um, and how to make it meaningful, like mm -hmm. how to really build a community mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And so I started kind of pulling it out and looking at it more seriously and started thinking about how are ways that I can solve the, you know, like I had always thought you can't buy yarn online. 
time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but how do you solve that problem? So I started figuring out ways to solve issues. And, um, and I also just, I've always been very passionate about getting more people knitting mm-hmm. because I think that, I just think that it's so, it's such a good thing for me, kind of from a stress relief yes. point of view. Mental health. That, yeah. It's, you know, wellness, mm-hmm. self-care. Yes. Um, you go get a manicure, you go knit. Yeah. I think that knitting helps you more in the long run than yeah. I get manicures too. And then um, my manicure just gets messed up because I don't wait long enough to pick up my needles. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I force <gasps> myself. I'm like, I just sit there and I'm like, okay, it's been 15 minutes. Okay. As long as I go careful about the keys that I touch, I'm probably okay to get home. Yeah. Totally. So. No, talk about, before we go like dive into Row House, yeah. talk about the difference in culture with knitting Manhattan you said Germany, London. You, you, well, you also mentioned Berlin, but that was earlier. Was, yeah, that was in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was going to say, talk about the differences between London, Manhattan, LA. Like, talk about that. How is it different? In terms of knitting? Yeah. Like, um, what's different in the cultures? Did you notice anything? Or is it all the same? Is it the great unifier? Um, I mean, I'm asking the wrong question. Yeah. So the, it's different because the personalities of the city are different. Mm. So I think that personality does drive a little bit of the knitting. I mean, obviously one obvious difference is in LA, I started saying, you know, it's time to do more lace knitting. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll do that, right? <laughs> um, and in London, I was really surprised that when I, I first visited there, but then you know, a few years later, I ended up moving there for, for a role. Um, there, there weren't at the time that many yarn stores, mm-hmm. um, which when you think about like the rich traditions of British Whoa. wool, um, was kind of amazing to me. Yeah. Um, and you had some of the iconic players. So like Liberty mm-hmm. was downsizing its yarn department. Oh, so what it is now is nothing like what it was when I first visited London. I didn't even know Liberty had yarn. I just thought they had fabric. No, they have. A, they have. A, they used to have. So, I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, I was there a long, long time ago. It's been a state, and I'm going to say years. So, um, <laughs> long time ago, and they they carried a lot of different kinds of yarn, and they also had this weekly knit night mm. there, or knit day. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a Monday afternoon or maybe a Monday evening thing, mm-hmm. and they had like one of their employees would be around to kind of host it, and and they had is is. It was kind of the the most famous knitting group in mm-hmm. London at the mm-hmm. time, and then they, because of changes they made in the overall business, they walked away from that. Interesting. So it's now like a tiny little part of what it was. Mm-hmm. So you were surprised that there wasn't more in London. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was one time where we we went for, um, me and my now ex um, went to Scotland for vacation, and. I was amazed at, I mean, they're far more sheep than people, like far more sheep than people in Scotland, like not even close. And you, I couldn't find wool to buy. Isn't that interesting? And I went to her and I'm like, where's their wool? And they said, and it broke my heart. They said, we don't make enough to sell it. So we burn the fleece. And that just kind of killed me. Mm -hmm. I was like, are Mm -hmm. you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it becomes just a haircut. Yeah. For the sheep. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so now you're in LA, the Tom's job changes, and what happens next? You know, I left Tom's and I started saying, okay, what you know, what am I gonna do with mm-hmm. the next chapter of my mm-hmm. life? And I, I was looking around for law jobs and um again, family and friends were kinda like, Cheryl, come on. It's time. <laughs> like, it's time, let's do it. And I kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. Um but then, you know, I heard about the a job as CEO of a, it's a much more digitally focused knitting company based overseas, based in London. Mm-hmm. If I tell you that, you can mm-hmm. figure it out. It's mm-hmm. not too hard. Um, and, I, and I was like, oh my God, that, that was like a sign. Mm-hmm. And so I talked my way into interviews. Um, I didn't get the role, um, but that process made me really start pulling out the knitting business idea. Mm -hmm. And because I saw that it was happening online with a couple of different companies, I was like, wait a minute, now I'm starting to see how I could do this digitally Mm -hmm. and how to, and how to really, um, make it appeal to 
people like me, so younger, um, that you know maybe are professional. They're working. You know, they're they're working in a job. They don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. to get out to yarn stores. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily want to sign up for a long class to learn to knit. Mm -hmm. And how do you give them something that kind of fits with their life, where they can do it when they want to do it mm -hmm. on their own time? They can feel good about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They get that creative outlet. They get the stress relief outlet. You know, and how, how do you deliver that to them in a way that feels good to them? Mm -hmm. so. And some people don't have local yarn shops. They don't. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of my audience is on YouTube because they don't necessarily feel they have that community live and in person. And so they feel a sense of community coming here. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're getting that also oh, yeah. being a digital platform. Yeah, I mean, that's what, it's something that I hadn't thought about originally. Mm -hmm. But as the business has kind of developed, and we're still like very early days, but um, it's very much been a surprise at how you really see people coming from all over. And, mm -hmm. and what I think is important for people to realize is that a lot of people they don't have a local yarn store. Mm -hmm. They maybe the closest thing they have is Michaels mm -hmm. or Walmart or Joann's, um, and but they still want to knit with nicer yarn. And how do you deliver a good customer experience? And how do you deliver a good visual experience? And how do you make it? Because a lot of stuff that's online is not it's not user friendly. Mm -hmm. You have to really know what you want before you get there. Mm -hmm. You have to be educated. It's, yeah. it, it's not a place for discovery. Mm -hmm. So it's like, can I create a place where it's, you can discover and you can learn and you can get something special and you can get something with a story behind it. Yeah. So are you a one-woman show? I've got a co-founder who she and I met um, in London, actually. She, we're both American. We're both American expats. She's now um, with her husband and their kids in Northern California. Um, so she kind of helps out. Um, it's, you know, I'd say it's, I'm certainly devoting the most of my time. Mm -hmm. Um, then I have a graphic designer, mm -hmm. I have some models, I have some designers that help with kind of creating knitting and I'm forgetting at least one or two. I have photographers and I have a videographer mm -hmm. who I all work with like, you know, on a freelance basis. But so. did you name the company after something with your partner, how you met? N no. Oh, I thought there so. was something about a bar. There was a bar. Which isn't a row house, but what, no. am, I think, what am I thinking of? So, so we met, so we, we met at a knit night in okay. London at the pub. Oh, uh, the pub. It's the still pub. there. Yeah, still there. The bar. It's the pub. pub. All you Londoners, when we had a London knit night, I almost had the knit night there, and then I decided it wasn't convenient enough for people. Uh -huh. But um, it's in Notting Hill. It's called the Earl of Lonsdale. Uh -huh. We met every Monday night. Um, I moved to London relatively recently, so I went, and that was great. And what was really funny about this knitting club was that the bar owners loved the fact that we were a knitting group. We had a back room. They let us turn up the lights. Um, and we started getting mail at the pub. Like from little, there were little like local events or little small little things. And so there was something where they were going to do like a knit seven course meal. Like they were going to knit all the little bits and pieces. And so they had emailed us or they mailed the details so the bar owner was like he would and I wasn't the organizer of this knit night but it was really funny to show up and the bar owner's like so you guys got some mail <laughs> okay that is so cute so it was really funny so that's what so the the name row house originally I really wanted to name it after my grandmother Goldie hmm. um originally that was kind of really where I was headed um because she was just, I mean, there were so many wonderful things about her. And she was the one who originally taught me to mm -hmm. know. Um, but I also, the more I looked at it, I said, okay, given the kind of place that I want to create and the kind of brand, I, I really wanted to steer away. I, I wanted to make it something modern. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it something modern and relevant for kind of, you know, people younger than me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and me, but also people younger than me. So... Mm -hmm. Um, that was actually, we developed it. I developed it with a, like a branding, like a branding firm, a naming firm. Really? Yeah. Because I, I was really struggling. I had tried. I tried. I mean, I had been starting to think about names for a long time. And That's... I was struggling. And they, vi so I, they gave me some suggestions. Mm -hmm. I gave them some 
strict guidelines, and of course they violated them with every single choice they gave me, but they gave me all the backup names, and then I sat down with a friend of mine, and we had a glass of wine, and we went name by name, and finally, like toward, like halfway through, we're, you know, it's a grow house, and we looked at each other, and we said, that's it, because, okay. you know, it, we love the fact that it conveys community, mm -hmm. it's, if you're a knitter, you get it, mm -hmm. if you're not a knitter, it's not, like, a weird name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so row, get it? We knit in rows. Row. Yeah. <laughs> get in, in case you didn't get it. Yeah. Um, because there are some people who didn't get it. <laughs> row. But that's why we want it to subtle, yeah. right? We want it to be subtle, where yeah. it's not like it doesn't hit you in the face. Yeah. It's kind of. I think I first envision like San Francisco, mm -hmm. row houses there, or there's plenty of row houses in New York yeah. and London. But I do love the double. Is it entendre? Double entendre? Meaning. Double meaning. Yeah, I like yeah. double meaning. Yeah. Row house. I'm always like, let me just finish my row! <laughs> or I'll say to my kids, instead of saying, you have five minutes to play, I'll say, you have one more row to play. <laughs> so you better, you better hope this is a fingering white sweater I'm working on. <laughs> Otherwise, and it's going to be round. It's gonna be a short row. <laughs> so funny. Okay, so I've never heard of a company that helps with branding and names like that. That's fascinating. Yeah. And Row House is, was the name. And so what were the challenges of getting this on its feet? Like, talk about the process. So, I mean, you know, when I started, from when I started getting serious about it mm -hmm. to when we actually launched was about four or five months. Okay. Which is really fast. I was going to say that seems very short. Yeah, I mean, and that's when my co-founder and and her husband, he's a like a very serious software developer, like brain, you know, MIT brain. We were and grateful so, to have him on the team, right? Yes, he is an <laughs> advisory board member. I am thankful every day. Yeah. <laughs> ben, I love you. Thank you, Ben. Um, Allison and Ben, you're awesome. Um, so I think you know what I was really lucky that Allison. You know, Allison and I had known each other for so long that, you know, we, I think, worked through it. I'm probably because I'm a lawyer. I don't know if it's because I'm a lawyer or not. But um, I'm very, like, if I said it, I'm going to, like, I will push and push and push. And I think Allison was probably ready to kill me yeah. for a while where I was like, but can we get this on my Monday? Can we get this, you know? Yeah. And, Goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, and then pushing, too. Yeah. Like, not, you know, like, I... I think I'm nice, but I want to, you know, like I had a clear timeline and we pushed it a couple times. So I originally wanted to open in October and we ended up opening um, the end of November, so like Black Friday of yes. 16. Um, so, I mean, the first thing that I did was really go around and I started talking to people and I started, because I said, I can't do this by myself. And so I started talking to, you know, Allison was one of the first people I talked to. I talked to my family. I talked to... Um, some former Tom's folks, mm -hmm. um, who are some of the, there's some of the kind of smart women minds mm -hmm. in digital. I think they're just really smart and they're, they really know it. Um, and so I, you know, I, you know, and I asked everybody, I said, will you help me? Like, mm -hmm. will you, you know, for a lot of people it was kind of, would you be an advisory board member? Mm -hmm. For my family, it was kind of a, do you think I'm crazy? <laughs> um, you know, I started to kind of look at financially what it would take because mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't want to raise money because I think that just limits you in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I thought that you know, I could do it, we could do it relatively um, cautiously. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and I kept waiting for people to, t and I talked to some former, I, I was the GC of Gucci group mm -hmm. back in London. Mm -hmm. So um, I talked to people from mm -hmm. kind of my Gucci group days, um, different, different folks. And kind of, you know, my ask of everybody was, is this a good idea or bad idea? Like, how do you think this, like, is this stupid? Mm -hmm. And for some people it was kind of, will you be an advisory board member? And here's, you know, here's what I can, you know, here's what I want to do for you to thank you for helping me. Mm -hmm. And I kept waiting for people to say no and nobody ever said no. Yeah. Um, everybody said, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I think that's really important yeah. to be a yes woman for someone else. I mean, but not if it's stupid, right? Well, like, I mean, I, like, I would hope that if my friends and family thought it was a bad idea, that they would have said, Cheryl, maybe this isn't mm -hmm. such a good idea. But, you know, yeah. they could see you had passion and that, yeah. you know, they were waiting for you to do this. And yeah. so they were happy to be your yes woman because yeah. they want to support you. Yeah. And that's why you become successful. 
Thanks for the yeses, everybody. <laughs> what happened when you opened on Black Friday? Like, was that you press publish and go. and then you you know and then you're just waiting and then yeah, what's that, that you know, like? I, I mean, it's I you know I think I probably I think I had very optimistic ideas of what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right, you kind of think you put it out there, and I had done some advanced work, so I had started. Um, working on Instagram mm -hmm. beforehand, I started building a Facebook. Like, there were things that I had been doing to build things up, um, you know, and got kind of Google AdWords right. But you know, then you sit there and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna go to sleep tonight. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And you kind of, it, and it's it's one of those things that it takes time to build. Yeah, and that's it does. What's been great um, having a few of my friends involved from Gucci Group and somebody else that I know mm -hmm. from the luxury world is, you know, they kind of have been the voices to say, Cheryl, this is three to five, you know, this takes a long time. Mm -hmm. This is not six months. This is not a year. You have to really stick with it. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, so every time I kind of have a nerve breakdown, <laughs> I, you know, I then go talk to somebody who mm -hmm. says, Cheryl, calm down. Mm -hmm. Well, this world is so different from being a lawyer. Completely different. You know, I mean, the nice thing about having, I mean, I don't know, I've never been a lawyer, but what I would say is if you're hired by a corporation, you go into work in the morning, yeah. you do what's expected, you can go home. I mean, a lot of lawyers still work after they get home, but yeah. you know, it comes to you. The work comes to you. Yeah. But the difference with this is you have to like push it out into the universe. And you have to do you know, you do everything. Yeah. So there's so many things that I've learned mm -hmm. that I had no idea before mm -hmm. that I really, you know, I really had to learn. What's an example of something you wouldn't, didn't expect and then it happened? I mean, I was not on Instagram or Facebook before September of 2016. Mm. And that was now a learning curve. I am on it all day, every day, you know, mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I didn't understand the value of it. And now I do. Mm -hmm. Like now I think I've been on it enough and I've seen how, like I'm really proud of kind of the row house Instagram account and a community and I feel like we have a community and people mm -hmm. I see people like they jump in with comments and it you know it's exciting. It yeah, makes like me happy. Forty thousand followers on Instagram, yeah. it's amazing. Where I work and at growing. every day. And growing <laughs> every day. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. I mean it's you know, it's and that is kind of um, you know, and that's big thanks to, to one of my former Tom's friends slash advisors who, you know, she really kind of helped me figure out what it should be mm -hmm. and kind of figure out how to do it where it's, it, you know, where we're creating a community. It's not just, here's this thing you can buy, here's that thing you can mm -hmm. buy. Um, cause I really try to stay away from that. I mean, I do, you know, you do some of that cause you just, you do, but I also try to make sure there's a lot of stuff about talking about maybe it's the designers we work with, maybe it's the artisans, um, who that's our dyers. Mm -hmm. I call them artisans because I just feel like dyers is, I feel like artisans is a nicer name. Okay. I call them designs instead of patterns because I feel like pattern sounds very um, like the brown paper sewing patterns yes. and I feel like there's more design in knitting okay. so I want it to be more so I'm going to make it that way. I like that. I like that. So, so when you go to rowhouse.com yep. tell yeah, us rowhouse yarn. Com. Rowhouse yarn .com. Yeah. tell us what we find. So as you go online you'll you'll what you'll find is Obviously, there's a shop which we carry, and we we carry. I think we're up to eight different artisans who we carry yarns of theirs, and they all do different stuff. The way that we curated it is by going finding vendors that we liked what they were doing, mm -hmm. you know, so and and where there's an ethically sourced store. Oh. So, for example, so one of them is Sincere, Sincere Sheep. Sheep. So, talk about Sincere Sheep. So, Sincere Sheep is a wonderful, she's a, she's a wonderful, and, and most of these are women-owned companies, too, which is kind of another thing that's nice to be able to support. We like that. So, she's based in the Napa Valley. She's an indie dyer. She uses all natural dyes. Mm, so, I can't believe this is natural. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's what, I mean, it's like, she's, I mean, she just is really amazing. Mm -hmm. And she also is very careful about where she sources her wool mm -hmm. and other fibers from and what kind of fiber she's using. So this there's is... silk, but it's Tessa silk, which is humanely harvested mm -hmm. after the silk, I think it's a silk moth sleeve, mm -hmm. and then they collect the silk. And this is 15% uh, Tessa silk and 85% whole worth wool. Right, which is sourced from South American wow. sheep. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an example. You know, there's other, a lot of times I've found them through 
going to Rhinebeck, mm. which is you know a big topic that we all love, mm -hmm. um, or going to other fiber shows and seeing kind of who are the indie dyers, who are the ind independent folks out there who are doing interesting things mm -hmm. that one will sell wholesale mm -hmm. because sometimes they won't, right. um, or and two um, can repeat deliver. Yes. Um, consistency in their colors yeah yeah so so you know through that I kind of came up with and, and we have you know one that I that I love that's a few of them are at Rhinebeck and I wish I could go this weekend um, but um, one of them is they use no dyes or chemicals at all and they're a Massachusetts farm it's a husband and wife retired husband and wife team who um, called Greenwood Hill Farm Greenwood Hill, Hill Farm. Yeah. Greenwood Hill. And so they don't actually sell online. They only sell online through me. Okay. So sometimes it's, it's kind of finding those relationships. Mm -hmm. So I went and kind of built those relationships. I purposely wanted to bring in the yarns that I thought were kind of special. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff that you weren't going to find on some of the other bigger websites. Yes. Um, you had to do that to differentiate yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I, like, I enjoy living with. So everything that I've been bringing on is stuff that I enjoy knitting with. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm picky. So, yeah. um, so, you, so you'll see, the, so you see the yarns. Mm -hmm. You'll also see, um, there's a, each artisan that we work with has a page. Oh, so cool. we have a page that, where they kind of, we've given them interview questions, they've come back with answers, we'll then kind of put it in there, we ask them for photos, mm -hmm. and we put together a little page about them that kind of talks about what they do and, and how like how they got into doing what they do and what inspires them and that sort of thing. I love that. To kind of really connect people to say, okay, mm -hmm. this isn't, you're not just buying, this is not just purple and pink yarn. This is from Sincere Sheep and this is how they decided to do their business. I love that. So, because again, it's all about, to me, it's all about connecting the yep. community. It's all about connecting it all together. Same. Then, um, then we have, um, we have an area that I'm, it's one of my favorite areas called Knit School. Um, I love that Knit School. It's so cute. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's one of my, that was one of my, I have, I had a number of 3 a.m. in the morning ideas. So, like, I'd wake up, I'd write a note, and I'd go back to bed. Yeah. And this was one of them. Um, and because I, there are a lot of knitting videos out there, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do it differently. I wanted to do it um, in, a, in a way that resonated with our brand. Mm -hmm. And so I work with the videographer who videos everything for the LA County Museum of Art. So we cool. get really high quality imagery, really high quality sound. She's not a knitter. So it's helpful because she'll be like, I didn't understand that. And she'll maybe go back and repeat. So we'll usually do a few takes. Mm -hmm. she, if, she, if something is too long, you know, she's, she's really helpful in terms of kind of framing it so that we're giving people what they need, but there's not a lot of extraneous stuff. Nice. Um, and the other thing that I did that most, that a lot of folks don't do is I break it down. We break it down skill by skill mm -hmm. because the other brainchild that I had, because again, a big part of Row House is bringing knitters in. It's making new knitters. Mm -hmm. That's what I really want to do. Yes, new knitters. Um, so we have, and you can see it if you go online, if you look at some of our beginner patterns, a few of them are free mm -hmm. and they're open. And the way that it works is if you go into it digitally, so you can print out a download mm -hmm. and it'll have some symbols on it. You can go into it online through the computer, through the computer, your tablet, your phone, whatever yeah. it is. Um, and what you'll see is it'll walk you step by step through how you learn. So our patterns can teach you to knit, and they mm -hmm. have. So if you go to a garter stitch scarf, you'll see in the digital version, I'll say make a slip knot, click here to watch our video on how to make a slip knot. Oh, that's so nice. Then you come back. And then you say, okay, now you need to do the knitted bind on or whatever bind on, you know, cast on that we're, um, that we're using. And then it'll take you to the video for that I skill. I like that. You know, and hey, if you need to watch the video 50 times, there's no judgment. Yeah. Nobody's paying attention. We don't you know? Care. Yeah. Watch, watch it, it 400 times. times. I don't, you know, like as long as it's helpful. Yeah. Um, and we do, we have some videos on little tips and tricks. So one of the things that I've seen over the years of how people kind of get messed up when they're first starting to knit is they hold the yarn the wrong way on the needle right. or they accidentally do a yarn over. Mm -hmm. So we've tried, you know, so we keep coming up with more, so we keep shooting them, but, um, you know, it's kind of putting in some of those pro tips, mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, make sure you're holding your yarn under the needle, mm -hmm. different things like that. We've also been, um, we did 
We've got like a Kitchener stitch video. Love. We're, I'm just about to launch a two at a time sock and sleeve because what I've, what I've been doing is kind of crowdsourcing video topics. Mm. So what I try to do is every six months-ish, we go to the community and we say, okay, we're getting ready to share our next batch of videos. What do you want? Oh, that's so smart. Um, and so, and so, and then, you know, sometimes they're asking for things that we've already shot. So then we can just direct them and say, hey, go here mm -hmm. and find it. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes we, um, and sometimes it goes on our list of things we want to knit. Yeah. So, so that's kind of, so knit school and, and knit school, the way it's organized is you don't have to use one of our designs right. to knit with. It's organized. I, I came up with kind of the school idea. So like knitting, there's knitting FAQs, which are generally like, that'll talk about dye lots. It'll talk about gauge needle size. Then you go through like knitting 100 basics, mm -hmm. knitting 200, I think is knitting in the round. Yeah. It's like and then, signing up yeah. for college. Yeah. I like it. But there's no signing up. And it's there's no signing up. Yeah. <laughs> So just go, go use it and enjoy it and make new bitters. Oh, that's so. funny. But you know what I'm talking yeah. about with the codes. Yeah. That's, that, and that's why I put it that way. <laughs> yeah. I, like that. I like that way. So it's just a lot cheaper. Uh, okay. I look at your cute bags too. And then the last, yeah. And then the last, oh, yeah. um, what else? Then the, then the last thing that's on there is really the designs part of it, which is yeah, kind of a design set. I, I mentioned the designs that link into the videos and we also have, you know, some designs from other folks that we work with mm -hmm. and we're slowly building that up, but I want to keep it curated mm -hmm. because otherwise I think it just gets to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so kind of finding things that are kind of, I think, relevant to people and kind of, you know, always probably pulling a few things out, putting a few things in, mm -hmm. but kind of having a good collection. Do you connect in with Ravelry at all? So we have a Ravelry group. Mm -hmm. I will say I, 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 I started, I have somebody that helps me is, is starting to work on kind of building that out a little bit mm -hmm. more. Um, she needs to get a bit more time, which hopefully she'll do in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, I'm not as, I'm not as active. We're not as active on Row House as, uh, you know, we are not as active on Ravelry as we should be. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit tricky, the groups. Like, I love that I'm in a group, and I have a group, too. But I I have my preferred methods of communicating. And so, and I think if you already have a website that you're maintaining, that it can be hard to do the parallel, you know, with Ravelry. Yeah, and I, what, I, what I'd like to do is find a way that I can use Ravelry that kind of does something different. Mm -hmm. And I haven't figured that out yet. Mm -hmm. Can you f discover Row House through Ravelry? Like, yeah. Are your patterns there and it can direct we, you? We're just starting to yeah, load. That's so helpful. I think there's a few. Yeah. I think that will be helpful to kind of get more of the audience over there yeah. from Ravelry. But it sounds like you really are focused on the new knitters. So how do you, how do the new knitters find you? So, I mean, that's, you know, right now I've been going after, I've been talking, ta looking more at existing knitters just because a lot of times existing knitters will, somebody will say, oh, I want to learn how to knit. And then they can say, oh, Rojas yeah. is a great place. Yeah. But the, and they can say, because... You know, I mean, I've talked to people to knit. You've talked to people to knit. Mm -hmm. It's not a 15-minute session. Right. Um, and so you want to give people resources that they can kind of continue on. Mm -hmm. And like 10 o'clock at night when they're stuck. Yeah. That they can go figure it out. Mm -hmm. So um, so that, it, so I, I think, you know, I'd say that my, my focus where I think we can really offer something new and different and special is to new knitters. Mm -hmm. Obviously probably most of the people that are customers right now are existing knitters. Yeah. And so it's, but you know, so every time, you know, somebody buys a kit, that's, you know, I'm like, okay, that's great. And what I will say that's really interesting is, you know, you get analytics through mm. of, the, of the website. Yeah. What and the analytics? there are a lot of people that are going to, we have, I think a handful of open patterns, free patterns, um, like garter stitch scarf, because I mean, Really, I'm gonna charge somebody for that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, stockinette stitch scarf. Um, what is the other thing? Oh, uh, washcloths. Mm -hmm. um, so some some basic things that could get people started. Mm -hmm. And those people, like people, are looking at those all the time. So um, interesting. People and, really want to knit. Yeah. And they have, you know, they're not all they're not all buying stuff from me, and and that's fine. I my expectation was that we would set this up. We get it out there, people, you know, and, and then my goal is to make people 
basically trust us and want to be yeah. part of our community. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, maybe they'll say, okay, I'm going to go buy something for my next project. You know what? I'm going to buy from Roadhouse. house. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, if, you know, if, if what we're doing is helping them, you know, it, karma is, karma is a thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and I, I think people feel that about their local yarn shop also. They think, you know, I want to support this. I mean, I just had a bookshop open in my neighborhood and I can save a lot of money by buying on Amazon, but I value that bookshop yeah. in my neighborhood. So I put stuff in my Amazon cart and then I go over there and look at my cart and buy it from the shop yeah. at double the price. <laughs> But it's because I want I want that and I value it. So I think that you're right about the building of the community. I think it's really important. And I think we knitters really like that. So yeah. I think that's a good instinct. I like it. So what, um, is there something that happens, like if I were to visit rowhouse.com every month, is there something new every month? Or how do you sort of keep it fresh for the people who keep coming back? Like, talk about that. Um, I mean, so there's not something well, I mean, there there probably is something new every month, mm -hmm. right? So there's we we regularly launch new designs mm -hmm. or new yarns or new things. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, but I think that also what I've kind of learned and, and and part of what I think is so important about knitting is that we've all heard about fast fashion, yes. right? Where it's kind of disposable, yeah. And there's so much stuff coming out of the knitting world right yeah, now. There's yeah. so many designs. It, you know, it's kind of overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so I actually think that it's not necessarily about newness. It's about highlighting what's there. Oh, good. You know, it's about mm -hmm. saying, listen, why, why, we don't, this is, this is still the great pink it was. Yeah. We don't need a new pink. Yeah. Um, instead, let's focus on how you're going to use this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And so it's, to me, it's a, it's a little bit more of looking at it as it's kind of slow fashion, right? Mm. So it's saying, let's keep it fresh and let's let's kind of keep things interesting, but n not throw things at people to the point where they're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, my goal is to keep it kind of curated. Yeah. So we, we obviously are still new, so we're still building things out. Mm -hmm. So like we just launched today um, a couple of new yarn lines um, from Owol. Owol, oh, so beautiful. Yes. And, and, and she's amazing. Yeah. And, just the the science the the like care to fiber that she put behind it. Isn't she organic also? Yeah. So o for, we, o for organic or O for something it's else? It's O yeah, it's O for organic. Mm -hmm. Um and what we carry is she has she has a, a line of yarns. We have two of them right now that we just launched that are certified organic machine washable. Ooh, wow. So she uses a certified organic polymer, which usually you get a super wash mm -hmm. by applying chemicals that right. are not necessarily good chemicals. Mm -hmm. And so she does it by applying it with the So yeah, so it's pretty, pretty spectacular. That's great. What are you knitting on right now? I have a couple projects going. <laughs> so I have a, there's a new Erica Knight wool mm -hmm. and I adore Erica Knight beyond. I, I've met, I've been lucky enough to meet her a few times. She came to our, we did a knit night in London and she came to that and it was fantastic. Um, and she, what I really like about her, aside from just her, is she pays attention to her named yarns. Mm. So she's got a wild wool that's come out, we're just about to start carrying it, um, which has a blend, it's a blend of wool and nettle, mm. which is a sustainable fiber. Mm -hmm. It's a gorgeous yarn. But she also comes out with really fantastic designs. Mm -hmm. I have that, a few of her books. Yeah, I mean, it just, she, you know, you can see that she was originally a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Like, she started out, she started out as a menswear designer. Yeah. Um, but she's got that, when you look at the silhouettes, when you look at the lines, it's stuff that you look at and you say, wow, I could, you see, you can see wearing it. You're mm -hmm. like, I, it, it makes sense. That would be sense. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that so I'm knitting one of hers and then um, and then I'm and then I'm starting to work on. I just finished up a row house design, mm -hmm. which is I'm not a designer, so I'm one of the things that I'm in New York for is um, I'm going to be uh, doing a hand knitting workshop at Parsons School oh, of Fashion nice. tomorrow, um, and I'm, so I'm working with the MFA students because what I'd really like to do is get more more of the the fashion folks thinking about designing for hand knits. Like wow. Michael Kors used to do a lot of it. I don't think he does so much anymore. Mm -hmm. 
um, because I think then you can get some really interesting kind of shapes and, yeah. and, and styles. And again, looking, you know, looking after the folks that I feel like could be brought into knitting. Yeah. It's kind of those professional women who are like, what am I going to wear? Yeah. What am I going to wear? Oh, I'm going out on the weekend. What am I going to wear? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, so my goal is to get more designers interested in doing a designer two on the side. Yeah. You know, like they do their main line and then they do a designer two. Their side, side hustle for row house. Exactly. Um, like that. So that. So that's sort of why I'm here. But until then, long way of digressing, um, until then, um, I, uh, I'm doing a bit of designing on the side. Cool. And then I have some other folks that are working. So that one, we're just finishing up and... Um, and that should launch in the next few weeks. What about your patterns and designs, you call them designs, on your website is different from another website? What differentiates you? Well, I'm saying... Yeah. Differentiates? Yes. Yeah. You what differentiates it. you? <laughs> Words are so hard. Especially, you know, in the morning. Um, it's um, midday. She's being kind. Um, <laughs> Um, so I think one of the things that differentiates us is the way that we're looking at kind of creating designs in terms of, we like to have, I like to have a lot for beginners and a lot that are interesting. So mm -hmm. things that are not just a garter stitch scarf. We have a garter stitch scarf, but give people other options that they can start to learn to knit, but do it with patterns and design designs that it still doesn't work even I for me. But, but I get it, yeah. Um, that, are, that people are going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that, that, that I've done and paid a lot of attention to to, to make sure that we're, we're making people successful is, one, when we write beginner patterns, we write them differently. Mm. So we, we explain a lot more in, mm. the, in the wording so that we assume that people aren't going to know even what is cast on me. Right. Right. So how do we explain a little bit more? And the second thing we do, and we do this for all designs, not just beginners, is we work with a tech editor who's amazing um, from Interweave Knits. Um, and she, she's amazing. She, I mean, she just really knows her stuff and she's mm -hmm. so careful and she's so thoughtful. And she really just goes through and makes sure that you know, the math adds up, the directions make sense, that it's the way people are, people are going to understand the directions yes. and that it's going to actually get them to the right place. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's so important. I, I have taught some beginners and they just don't understand. You know, I, I, a friend of mine brought me a project the other day and she said, help. And I was shocked at the pickle she'd gotten herself into. <laughs> And I said, okay, this is what happened to you. And I understood why she made the mistakes she made. Yep. But it is so important that you have that tech edit. Because a lot of times patterns just kind of, like we talked about earlier, it's just about how fast can we get this out. And yep. so sometimes they miss a few steps. So it's nice to know that there's extra care yep. into these patterns. Okay, well, thank you so much thank for you. reaching out. I'm so, I always love when I can interview someone in New York who's not a New Yorker. <laughs> Because it saves me a plane ticket. And then I get to bring more people to you. So go check out rowhouseyarn.com. Yeah. I love the goodies I got. These stitch I'm so excited about these stitch markers because they're all the sizes. Yeah. Oh, it's all the and sizes. And they're not snaggable. So what I always yeah. get worried about is that if I use stitch markers, they're going to get snagged on something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a complete circle. There's no catch. So I'm very excited about this because, oops. As I spill them all over the floor. Because I I always lose my stitch markers too. And I, I'm glad I have this little pouch. It's going in my kit today. I'm very excited about that. Well, it's great to meet you. Yeah, it's great to meet you. Thanks too. for being on Christy Glass Knits. I'll put all the links down below so you can find them so easily. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.